pretty good. I think you're pretty great. How is it being here tonight? Pardon me? How's it being here tonight? It is wonderful. Every time I'm here for a showing, it seems to be better than the last time. The enthusiasm of the fans, that's what gets me. They not only are here because they like to see celebrities, but they love these movies and they care about them and that's so gratifying. And for you, you're going to see some new characters on screen for the first time. Spider-Man, Black Panther. What was your reaction when you found out they were joining the Marvel Cinematic Universe? I wasn't surprised, but I'm happy as hell. No, it's, it, Marvel just knows how to put things together and do it in a surprising, unexpected way and making it work after they've done it. They're wonderful. Who would you recruit for Team Stan? Um... Captain America. Whoa, Captain America. No, <laughs> no doubt about that, huh? No doubt about that. And why is that? Well, because Chris is about a half inch taller than <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> it really comes down I mean, to... You need a reason. That's as good a reason. No, I don't. I don't care. I love them both. And they're both going to look real good on screen. And the audience is going to have a, a tough time taking sides. They're going to love them both. You keep continuing to create and put more things out into the world. What inspires you these days? What what makes you excited about things? Greed. <laughs> I have I have my own little company called Pow Entertainment and we're doing other movies. We have a new hero called The Annihilator. Oh, wait till you see him. So it's fun. I, there's Marvel, there's the Pow Entertainment things, there's come into these openings, it, it couldn't be more wonderful. It really and, could. and why do you think that these superheroes, you know, who have been around for such a long time, still continue to resonate with audiences? See, I have a theory. Young kids love fairy tales. They get a little old, because they're stories of giants and witches and magicians. The kids get a little older. They can't keep reading fairy tales. But along come these superhero stories, and they're really fairy tales for older people, with people who can fly and are super strong and have super power. How can you not be fascinated by that if they're written well for grown-ups, but simply enough so kids can enjoy them? I think that's really part of the magic, the fact that you have you know, incredible action and all of these magical elements, yet at the same time, you have these really deep themes that resonate. Right. And you have great action, and you also have characters that the audience can care about. And that's what makes a good movie, I think. You've got to care about the characters, and Marvel does that so well. And as far as advice to aspiring comic book artists, aspir uh, aspiring writers out there, what, what would you pass along? That's a tough one. The artists have to be able to judge their own work and have to be able to tell that what they're drawing is as good as what's being published, or better. Because if it isn't, there's no reason for anybody to hire them. To be a writer, you... Wow, who's that? I don't know. We're going to find out, though. You've got to be able to write stories that will appeal to all ages, but not just a lot of action. There's got to be psychology. There's got to be real flesh and blood people. Excellent. Well, have a wonderful time tonight. Thank you so much for joining it us. It was great talking. Great talking with you. 